to our soils, to the atmosphere itself. Our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality. Specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel body armor just won't quit. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver. Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com. No survival chest is complete without Silver Bullet. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Silver Bullet. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. All right, I saw a lot of mainline conservative news websites last week claiming that there was going to be a terrorist rally uh, in Garland, a suburb of Dallas, Texas, in northeast Texas, where I grew up, basically. Garland's one of my old stomping grounds. And so we sent Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson uh, up there. They did a great job. And to show how balkanized things are, we got called Islamophobes for sending people up there to cover it. And then once they got there, I've, I've debriefed Joe. He's about to talk about it live on air. Then we're going to go to um, Mark Dice in a moment to cover some other ignorance. As soon as they left the rally against, I guess, Muhammad, you could call it, and to go over to cover the other side, people booed them and yelled and called them you know, fags and stuff like that, basic pejoratives. That's what went on. It was very infantile from the video I've seen. Basically, white trash on parade. That said, there is radical Islam that's being politically protected and allowed to operate. But they started the conference off, and Joe's going to break this down, condemning everything that happened with the Charlie Hebdo event. Uh, basically what we'd been told and what we'd heard was not true about the rally. And we just went to find out what was happening. We just try to cover the truth of what's unfolding. And this is the clash of civilizations that the social engineers want and that they're manipulating to play us off against each other. 
On the other hand, they've banned free speech in Germany and criti criticizing Islam, and the German police have banned anti-Islamic rally citing terror threat. So see, oh, there's a terror threat, you can't assemble. Oh, there's a terror threat, you can't have a concert. There's a terror threat, you can't fly, or we've got a naked body scan you. No, we don't give in to the threat. We're a free, open society. Imagine if there were real terror attacks in this country, how many rights they'd take. You get 20 dead at the Ebdo attack, we're talking about getting rid of free speech, period, and internet censorship, and they've introduced SOPA and CISPA again. SOPA at the federal level, CISPA internationally. We told you that was coming. Merkel's out there marching for free speech while she's banning it in Germany. So it's outrageous. Uh, Joe Biggs joins us on Martin Luther King Day to talk about free speech, I guess. I just spend a few minutes. I also noticed they had the sheriff's department in their camo there and more uh, inside the building. Uh, we've got more reports uh, coming out tonight of what you actually shot inside. But, Joe, give people your breakdown of what happened. Yeah, when I got there, I didn't know what to expect on the drive up there. Jakari and I were kind of like at a loss for what we you know, what we were going to expect when we got there. I was reading some of uh, the Twitter feeds, and they said at this point in time, we're about 30 minutes out. They said there were hundreds of people already out there protesting at this point in time. So we're like, all right, this this could be interesting. And as we pulled up to the, uh, the convention center, hundreds of people lined both sides of the road, tons of motorcycles driving up and down the road, people waving American flags, Jewish flags, you know, screaming, God bless America, no, Sharia law doesn't belong here, Muhammad was a homosexual and a pedophile, blah, 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 blah. So we park behind the protesters and we go around and start talking to some people. And uh, one guy goes, oh yeah, InfoWars, uh, glad you guys came out here. And, and I was like, well, do you mind if I talk to you, sir? And he goes, yeah, 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 that's fine. I was like, so why are you out here, sir? And he goes, well, I'm out here for freedom of speech. And I said, well, okay, so do you have a problem with the Stand for the Prophet rally that's happening next door or across the street, I should say? Well, yeah, yeah, I don't think they should be over there. I don't think they should be allowed to talk to, to anything like that whatsoever. So that was just the aspect of people the entire time that they were just ignorant about everything. They were just out of their mind. Like we were standing there behind the protesters and by the time we went over to where the actual event was, people started booing us. People started calling us names. People started, uh, you know, saying, you guys should go to Iraq and see what it's like, you know. And so we finally get over to the other side and we get out of the vehicle. And I'm watching some of these protesters that are at the entrance of the, uh, the drive to come into the convention center. And this Muslim guy walks by and this guy screams out, look, he's got a beard. There's probably a bomb in that beard. They hide him everywhere. They're shifty. You know, and it was just like out of this world. So it was like they were trying to get cast for deliverance. Yeah. I mean, that's what was there. And, and, and I don't want to knock our listener that was out there. People get angry. I've been mean at protests as well. You get in an angry mode. They had probably read the news articles claiming that this event, because I remember reading these going, is this accurate? Some of these are pretty big news outlets that, you know, claiming that terrorists were there. Yeah. And then as you said, you went and investigated. That wasn't the case. So I think it was the disinformation that hyped them into getting mad. So I'm not calling the whole group, you know, white trash rednecks, because I'm kind of redneck myself. The point is, some of the smartest folks I know is what you'd call a redneck, you know, wise uh, folks. It's just that you're saying that there was that flavor to some of the people. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, when we got into the rally, they started the... Uh the rally off inside, they had a prayer, and then they opened up. They said, we do not uh, condone any acts of violence. We condemn the attacks of Charlie Hebdo. We condemn Boko Haram. We condemn ISIS. These are not people of Islam. They do not follow the Prophet Muhammad. They, th these are people who take, you know, 18, 20-year-old young men who are angry and, you know, piss off at the world and use them and mold their minds into this radical. Did they let you film that? Uh, no, we had to sign a consent form. Couldn't film. Because I know you could film some of it, but not in, in, in that one area. That's so stupid. Because you'd think they, they need to get that out there because a lot of Muslim groups will not condemn it. They need to, they should have condemned it publicly. Well, there was an American flag and a Texas flag. Everyone had little American flag and a Texas flag. Each person had one. It was all, there was hundreds of Muslims in there. And they all were waving them up in the air, you know, and they kept calling themselves Muslim Americans. So I noticed a drone was out there, too. Yeah, there was a drone out there flying around. But, I mean, nowadays, I mean, everyone can go buy one at a hobby store. So, I mean, it didn't have any identifiable marks. Yeah, police one will have lights on it. Yeah. But there was tons. There was a huge police presence. They had those little towers, you know, they jack up that you can see in Walmart parking lots now. 
that had those all over the place. And then we saw, uh, like you saw, the uh, militarized-looking police from like Ferguson standing in the window watching on as well. These guys came out that you can see right here. They came out to pray and they wanted to do it in front of everyone to show that they're being peaceful and you know they don't mean any harm. They just want to be a part of the community. And one of the other things I thought was interesting as well, uh, one of the keynote speakers came up and he says, I'm thankful that I can live in a country where freedom of speech is protected, where I'm allowed to come out and have a rally to help bring awareness to what it is we're trying to do to be a, a peaceful part of the uh, society in Garland. And well, that's what the Dutch mayor, who's a Muslim, said, is if you don't appreciate freedom of speech and everything, you should get out of the country. Well, the same thing goes for Merkel, not just radical Muslims. What do you think of them banning even mainline political parties protesting against open borders and, and the forced uh, importation of tens of millions of Muslims uh, to create balkanization by the left? Them banning free speech. I mean, even if you don't agree with these groups, they should have free speech. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Even if I don't agree with what the, the, the other side's saying, I still I'm still glad I live in a country where they're able to have that opinion, they're able to voice it without being persecuted, you know, in a sense. So, I mean, I think it's great that we live in this kind of country, but some Americans need to understand what freedom of speech is, and, well, I'll and tell it's you, for everyone. I agree. I, I don't want to make a big deal out of this, because I don't like to infight, but if you can go re-pull me the articles that were claiming that this guy's a terrorist, that guy's a terrorist, I want to look at those when I get off air today, because... That's dangerous for people to say known terrorists are at this event to stir up people. Well, yeah, that's what they were saying. Yeah, I know, I know. And, it, you know, it's fun to hype up the Muslim threat and everything. I understand people like to do that. But this is all part of this divide and conquer strategy. And I think the borders are too open. We are bringing radical Muslims in. I'm against it. They, the, they're being allowed to fly around. They're being allowed to recruit. They're being allowed to train. I say go after them because that's training for military attacks. Clearly illegal. But the attempt to just let them attack and then create a fight with general Muslims is part of a larger plan. It's like, yeah, there are bad cops out there. They should be punished. But don't let George Soros fund $33 million to start a war on police that's meant to start civil unrest. That's so obvious. I mean, we said that back at the time that George Soros was behind it because we tracked the name of the groups. But what do you make of it coming out that he admits that he's behind the anti-police stuff. That's pretty obvious. Yeah, I mean, that's mind-blowing to see all this. I mean, because you see people now, I mean, there's, I've been following some stuff in Jacksonville, Florida. They've been popping shots off at police officers, fire departments doing drive-bys. I mean, it's happening all over the place because of this cop phobia that's now happening. They, you know, all police are bad that they're saying. I mean, a few bad apples out there, but if you look at the, the amount of police officers and the tens of thousands of calls they go on, they do pretty positive stuff. Well, the, the globalists want to federalize them and turn them into a paramilitary force that hates the public. So the globalists are funding idiots to attack them, so, yeah. so the cops go into that psychology yeah. and call it a war zone. This is the plan, yeah. and Soros admits it. It's illegal what he's doing. I guarantee you, if I was funding $33 million and stirring up groups to go, say, deck the halls with dead cops, I'd get arrested, and I should. Soros is above the law because he runs the White House. The White House is doing this. The White House is running it. Joe Biggs, thank you. Yep. He's with us till five minutes in the next hour, and then we're going to be uh, joined by the Food Babe. He's got a new book out, some really positive uh, news on food freedom, one of the main fronts we can still have an effect. But I played this already uh, at the start of the last hour, and that is the powerful video up on Infowars.com. Americans think Martin Luther King just died or was a Confederate general or was the first african-american to walk on the moon i'm not going to play the whole video again it's on infowars.com these are not cherry picked i want to get into this with mark dice on martin luther king day markdice.com he's an author and media critic his new books out inside the illuminati we'll tell you some about that as well or have him back up in a few weeks to a whole hour on the true history of the illuminati he's done a lot of research into it but mark uh, first off, shifting gears back to what we just covered, uh, a few minutes with us on the clash of civilizations, uh, the radical Islamics that are being brought in. What do you make of this overall and George Soros's attempt to basically fund um, destabilization and, and ultimately attacks on police and private property? 
Well, it's the classic plan of the clash of civilizations to pit different groups against each other, basically to tap into the most primitive aspect of humanity's tribalism. And with the Martin Luther King.